Hello, my name is Aiden and welcome to another Golf Predictor tutorial. Today I am going to talk about the first option on the information menu, Golf Courses. So we go to that menu and click Courses. This brings you to the Golf Predictor page containing all the golf courses in the database. As you can see, this page sorts courses alphabetically. If you know what letter the course you're interested in begins with, you can narrow your search here using these alphabetical links. If you do not know what letter your course starts with, but you know, for example, the course you're interested in is in Canada, then you will have to go to the Golf Predictor search page and look there. So we click on that. Make sure that courses is the only thing clicked and enter Canada in the search box. Now, as you can see there, the search returns all the courses in the database uh, that are in Canada. So you should find the course you are interested in here, assuming, of course, it has held a PGA Tour event since 2003. Okay, that's the search page. So we'll just go back to the page we were on, the courses page. As you can see, there are some chart links that you can look at. For example, if you want to find out what the longest courses on the US tour since 2003 are, then you click on the longest US link. This brings up the longest courses and hovering over them, you can see that the Ritz-Carlton at Dove Mountain, which up until recently held the Accenture Match Play Championship, is the longest. However, it should be noted that this course uh, was halfway up a mountain, therefore the altitude made the course play shorter. Okay, we'll go back to the page we were on. Now, if you want to find out what the longest course on the US tour is in a given season, then you have to go to the Other Stats Tournament Stats page. And I've got that open here already on another tab. So for example, you see we're on the 2015 US tour, you see links for shortest courses and longest courses. So clicking on those links will give you a similar chart that we saw a few seconds ago. Okay, back to the main golfer, uh, golf course page. Another interesting chart on this page is the Linz chart. So we we'll click on uh, the Linz US chart. And this brings up a distribution of the course lengths on the US tour since 2003. So you can see at a glance that the vast majority of courses on the US tour since 2003 are in the 7000 to 7600 range, those two middle bars, while there have been 14 that are between 6701 and 7000 yards, and only seven courses that are over 7600 yards. And as usual, hovering over a bar shows more information. So you can see that 45.6% of courses are between 7,000 and 7,300, roughly. And that 35.96% are between 7,301 and 7,600. That's quite interesting. Again, there's a similar um, chart for uh, per season on the tournament stats page that I showed you a few seconds ago. Okay, let's talk about the data table itself. So this time you have courses uh, and you see their power, length, what tour they're uh, on uh, and where they are. Uh, you get a location and a country. So as usual, if you hover over a link, you get more information. And in this case, you see how many tournaments um, this particular golf course has held since 2003. So let's look at a more famous golf course in more detail. You see down here, probably the most famous of them all, Augusta National, which as you see there has hosted the Masters every year since 2003, given a grand total of 13 so far. So if we click on that link, again, I've got it up here on another tab, you see all the information in the database for uh, this particular golf course. So for example, you can see its location, uh, its yardage, its power, 
and all the tournaments it has hosted to date. So underneath um, the tournaments that it has hosted, you also see some uh, very useful scoring records. So you can see there that uh, the highest round uh, since 2003, since golf predictor records began, the highest round has been 92, which was done by one of the old timers. And if you hover over the, the value in the table, you'll see who was responsible for each round for Tommy Aaron there with that um, uh, record. And you can see also that the lowest round which has been shot by in three different rounds is 64, which has been done by Jordan Spieth this year, uh, and also in round two by Jason Day in 2011, and also by Bo Van Pelt in 2012 in the final round. So that's the kind of information you can see uh, on a course. I should also mention before I leave this page, you can also see a map of the uh, location of the course by clicking on this little globe here. And if you do so, that will bring up this page here, where you can see uh, the course location on a Google map. So there it is in Georgia. Hovering over the flag marker will give you more information on the course, such as its name, its location, its power, and its latest yardage. It should be noted that for most courses, if you zoom in to a high level, then the course location won't be accurate. So it's just for a general overview of where the course is in the world. Okay, very good. Go back to the course page for a minute and just to note that the length in yards here is the most up-to-date length of the course. So for example, if the course goes through major modifications, then this yardage mightn't be relevant for an older running of the tournament. So just be aware that the yardage in the course page uh, relates to the latest available yardage for the course. Okay, so we'll go back to the main courses page to wrap up. A couple of final points about this page before I go. As usual, you can sort by any of the columns in the table if you so wish. Also, if you uh, look at the text at the beginning of the page, it actually shows you how many courses are in the database and their average yardage. Finally, I'd just like to bring your attention to this uh, somewhat interesting chart. It's the power breakdown of all the courses in the database on a tour basis. So for example, if you want to see what's the standard power for a course on the US tour, click on this link, it brings up a pie chart. And as you can see on that chart, that the vast majority, all but two in fact, are of courses on the US tour since 2003 have been either a par 70, par 71, or par 72. If you hover over a particular segment, then you will get the percentage breakdown in the bolded text underneath. As you can see there for the par 70 breakdown, is 32.5% of all US tour courses. Okay, that's quite interesting. So going back to the course page, just to uh, wrap up, thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial useful and I'll talk to you again soon.